Hello and welcome to this musical edition of Encore. On today's set list... It was dubbed one of the greatest hip-hop albums of all time. Now, 20 years after Nas's platinum record, Illmatic hit the charts, it's set for the big screen and a fresh release. Plus, we meet one of France's newest indie darlings. Find out why Francois and the Atlas Mountains are making waves on both sides of the channel. And we'll tell you what's spinning on Record Store Day. We give our favourite picks so you don't have to wade through the racks yourself. Our music critic Mark Thompson is here to go through all this with me, so let's get started. Hi Mark, great to have you with us as always. Hi Jade. Uh, we're going to start with some music news first and hip hop legend Naz is re-releasing what's been called a groundbreaking genre defining album. Why do people say so? Well, this was one of those rare times in, in record releases where you get the right man at the right time, surrounded by the right producers and a really strong message. This record was everything that was great about this era of hip hop. Uh, let's remind ourselves a little bit. This is... Um, it Ain't Hard to Tell, which was one of the standout tracks from this album. So analyze me, surprise me, but can't magmatize me. Scanning while you're planning ways to sabotage me. I leave a froze like heroin in your nose. Nas a rock well, it ain't hard to tell. You can definitely see why it was so popular. It's got us bopping oh, our course, hands along. Yeah, straight away. Uh, but what can we expect from Illmatic XX, which is the re-released album? Well, the record still stands today, as I said earlier. And so we don't, they haven't really had to change much. So what they're doing instead is adding to it. So we have some unreleased demos, some uh, freestyles we've never heard before, and a couple of remixes to boot. Now, Naz is also going to be touring this record from start to finish throughout the US. So if you're lucky, you can catch one of those. Uh, he also has another album planned for later in the year. He's never really been able to replicate the success, so it'll be interesting to see if he can do that. Yeah, definitely. And there's also a documentary coming out about the making of the record. Yes, this it? really is the Illmatic month, it seems. Um, the, it's come, it's uh, debuting at the Tribeca Film Festival this week, and it's going to show more of the uh, social problems that, uh, that the record was really based on at Queens, in Queensbridge, New York, where Naz grew up. But it's also going to look at his family life and his father, who was a jazz musician, and really influenced this record. Sounds interesting. All right, and Naz also proved a big draw at the Coachella Festival, hasn't he? Yeah, so Coachella really kicked off, and Naz was on stage with Jay-Z, no less, a man who he used to have a running feud with. Uh, and the sun is out, festival season is now up and running, and Coachella is uh, headlined by some of the biggest US acts at the moment. Lord... Uh, Arcade Fire, Pharrell, um, Outcast, they were all there. There were 100,000 tickets which sold out in just 20 minutes. You can see why. <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, and if you can't, if you weren't lucky enough to get one of those, you, it is streaming all live on the internet, on YouTube, so you can watch that instead. Not quite the same thing, though. I've got a few friends who are there. I'm very jealous. Oh, but another I'm way... I'm jealous too, yeah. <laughs> another way you can perhaps get into the festivals, if you're a celeb, they're actually getting paid to be there. Yeah, they, they live the high life, don't they? I think we're in the wrong yeah. business. Uh, the US media are reporting that some celebs are even asking for $50,000 just to make an appearance at the festival. That's on top of having VIP passes as well. Now, Aaron Paul, who is uh, one of the actors from Breaking Bad, he's apparently asking for $15,000 plus three VIP passes for his friends and family to just go along. Uh, US media reports also say that uh, Vanessa Hudgens was uh, paid $15,000 by McDonald's just to attend a few parties. Nice. So, uh, I, I'm just going to volunteer myself. If anyone wants to pay me to go to I'm, the parties. Or... I'm very open for a VIP <laughs> yeah. uh, first class Anytime. fame ticket. The rest, the works. Any... Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're staying in the States and a man who's been around the top of the US charts for 16 weeks. Jason Derulo's single Talk Dirty also topped the European download charts at the end of January. Now he's set to release an album of the same name. Let's take a listen. Been around the world, don't speak the language, but your booty don't need explaining. All I really need to understand is when you, you talk dirty to me. You talk dirty to me. Talk dirty to me. 
So, Mark, this has seen uh, this album has seen Derulo top charts around the world, but apparently he's giving the album a bit of a rethink. Yeah, I'm not the biggest R&B fan, but I can see why that's proved successful, and it was a huge commercial success all around the world. Although this album was in, that song was initially released on the album Tattoos, which was released here in Europe and also in uh, in Australia, New Zealand, and a few other countries, but it was held back in the US, and that's because it got a very mixed reception from critics. So what the labels have done is been very clever, and they've just chucked it to Timberland who is very uh, well known for just creating hits left, right and centre. So what, what's he changed then? So it's basically a whole new album compared to the one that was released in Europe. We've got four new songs and on top of that we've got cameos from Snoop Dogg, Pitbull and even uh, Jarillo's Ger other half, Jordan Sparks, is tipping in for this right. uh, new one record. To, one to check out, that's for sure. Well, here in France uh, there's another man with an album out, Christophe Miosek, more commonly known just by his surname. After writing Johnny Halliday's award-winning 20 ans last year, he's now back with his own album Ici Bas Ici Mem. Let's take a listen. C'est pas fini. On vient à peine de commencer. C'est pas fini. On peut encore se retourner. C'est pas fini. On peut encore se raccrocher à la poésie. Especially very Frenchy. We just got very, a, yeah. <laughs> just got a taste of it then. But what can we expect from the rest of the album? Okay, so this is his first album in three years, but it's his ninth in total. But it's a return to more traditional chanson française, as we've just heard through there. The last album we released was quite of an ordinary rock album, so I think he's playing it safe here. It's not the most intriguing and exciting of albums, but it's very intense and very melodic at times. Uh, so this isn't the kind of record you're just going to chuck on uh, and have a little party with. It's more uh, have a glass of whiskey, Chill stare, out out, stare out through the window in the rain, think about the world. It sounds, it sounds very uh, français. Yes. All right, well, Mark, you've been speaking to another man who's also come home, Francois Mary from uh, Francois and the Atlas Mountains. Yes, well, after almost a decade in the UK, he's now returned back to Bordeaux, returned to France, and he's got a big record deal to boot. Um, now, the band released their breakthrough album, Evolvo Love, a couple of years ago. They're back with uh, their new latest record, Record. They're on a sellout tour throughout Europe. I caught up with them here in Paris. This is what happened. Just four years ago, Francois Marie considered leaving music entirely. Now he finds himself signed to the same label as indie music heavyweights Arctic Monkeys and Franz Ferdinand. Although he says he had to leave France to do it. There's lots of uh, ways that you have to do things and there's lots of trends to follow. Whereas I feel like in the UK it can take a long time, but at least people are keen to listen to experimental music. At 19, the Frenchman traded in his home in Saint in Western France for the west of England. For almost a decade, Francois released homemade records on both sides of the channel with the help of friends and small labels. Now his band Francois and the Atlas Mountains have released their first full studio album, Piano Ombre. Although he's moved back to his home country, England continues to influence the singer. He says it feels natural to work in both languages. It just depends on what surrounds me at the time. And sometimes an English sentence is more concise to, to, to describe something and sometimes in French it's more subtle. So. There's an African influence too something inspired not only by his experiences of traveling extensively around Senegal, Morocco and Mali, but also from his childhood. Yeah, I think my mum growing in Cameroon affected what I like because she listened to a lot of Morikante or, or Manu Di Bongo. I really like rhythm and intricate rhythms and puts you in the states where you, you can't resist from being in the groove. From France to the UK via West Africa, it's been a long journey for Francois and the Atlas Mountains. With a series of sold-out shows and festival appearances on the horizon, they could just be getting started. Definitely looks like one to watch there. Most well, definitely. Well, talking of French music, this weekend there's going to be plenty of new releases to whet people's appetite, isn't there? Yes, it's Disque Day or International Record Store Day as it's known outside of France and it's definitely one of my favourite days of the I, year. I know that's true. Uh, you've picked some of your favourites, haven't you? Of course, uh, and it's 
pretty impossible to talk about and not talk about four at the moment here in France. Uh, they're releasing a double EP, especially for the day. They've exploded on the French scene over the last 18 months or so since their debut EP came out. Uh, what you, if you haven't heard them, what you can expect is very lo-fi, uh, spoken word over a minimis, mi minimalist electro. Um, it's hugely popular. They sold out 20 shows in just five, uh, five weeks here in Paris, and it's uh, it's, you can't really walk around without hearing their name uttered. And yet they're keeping their identity secret. I'm not sure how much longer I, that's going to last no, for. No, of course not. All right, any other French bands to look out for? Yes, uh, of course, Woodkid, who, another man with a big record out last year, he is better known as a, a music director, really, for the likes of Katy Perry, uh, Taylor Swift, Lana Del Rey. He's releasing two songs from his breakthrough album last year called The Golden Age. Now, again, what you can hear here is high-quality production, lots of strings, lots of brass, and some more deconstructed to dance speak so it's, it's quite clever and it's a lot easier to listen to than for non-french non speakers if uh, you couldn't really get into fourth all right and uh, the pixies are another band that is certainly going to the spirit of the event aren't yes, they? yes i really love this uh the pixies haven't released a record since 1991 and what they're doing is releasing the album a couple of weeks in advance for just independent stores for the day and this is really in the spirit of their scare day and so this record itself uh, is called uh, indie cindy and it's the first album since uh, bassist Kim Deal left. So it's more of a solo record for Frank Black, but it's still very strong. All right, well, Mark, we have to leave it there. And we're going to end the show with a clip of the Pixies' latest album, Indie Cindy. Thanks so much for sharing your musical insights, as always. And thanks to you for tuning in. Don't forget, you can get more music and culture news on our website. Enjoy and see you soon.